Mars, the red planet that has captured our imagination for years. Shiny cities under massive domes? It's undoubtedly a stunning image. But setting up camp on Mars is challenging. Those picturesque cities are still only an aspiration. So let's get started. Mars is evidently different from Earth in many ways, bringing up many challenges. But did you know that people have been thinking about living under Mars' surface or even in special balloons that float in space? This isn't just a page from a science fiction book. This is an idea scientists have been exploring for decades. For over 30 years, experts have been working on a unique space balloon, or in other words, inflatable habitat. Think of it as a big, secure tent that could become your new home in space. This exciting invention has the potential to solve many of the challenges of living on Mars or in space. These inflatable homes have been investigated by NASA and have even been used in multiple different space applications since the early 1950s. Over the years, the idea of these homes are becoming more refined and realistic as more information is collected. These inflatable homes have been in the works for a long time, with the idea becoming more refined and realistic over the years. As more countries and companies show interest in exploring and living in space, there is growing competition to find the best ways to set up homes away from Earth. Balloons aren't the only idea on the table. Have you heard of 3D printed housing? NASA has been looking into this. The idea is to use Mars's regolith soil to build structures. Here's how it works. Robots would be sent up to Mars before humans would collect this soil. Then they would mix it with certain materials, heat it up, and use a giant 3D printer to create buildings layer by layer. It's an ambitious plan. However, it does have its fair share of problems. First, we need to get those heavy robots and printers to Mars, which is not an easy task. Then, there are concerns about the energy required to power these machines. Some scientists even worry that Mars' soil could be harmful to humans. Although we have studied the red planet for a while, most of our knowledge about its soil comes from far away. This means that while exciting, the idea of 3D printing on Mars is still mainly theoretical. So, with 3D printing facing some big hurdles, many are looking more to the idea of inflatable habitats. These habitats would be made here on Earth and sent to Mars all folded up. Once they arrive on Mars, they would inflate themselves, set up solar panels to get more power from the sun, and be ready for astronauts to move into. Imagine this, after a long and tiring journey through space, astronauts arrive on Mars to find a comfortable, inflated home waiting for them. It sounds more straightforward and more practical than sending robots ahead and hoping they can build something from scratch. Of course, we are still in the early stages of figuring out the best way to live on Mars. But with every passing year, the ideas become clearer, the technology improves, and the dream of living on another planet becomes closer to reality. Both inflatable habitats and 3D printed structures are examples of the innovative ways scientists and engineers are trying to solve the challenges of living in space. Whether it's under the surface, inside a balloon, or a 3D printed house, the future of living on Mars looks bright and full of possibilities. Bigelow Aerospace is the name that some might find unfamiliar. Yet, long before the ambitious ventures of Elon Musk's SpaceX and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, Robert Bigelow, a hotel business entrepreneur, envisioned establishing hotels beyond Earth. Historically, space exploration has been a domain of governments with agencies like NASA leading the charge since the late 1950s. However, the 1990s saw a dawn of a new era as private enterprises like Bigelow, aerospace ventured into this frontier. In collaboration with NASA during the late 1990s, Bigelow initiated an ambitious project, which can be explained as the development of expandable space modules intended to amplify the international space station capacity. Yet, due to insufficient funds allocated by Congress, this vision seemed to be in jeopardy. 
Regardless, Bigelow remained committed. A decade passed and the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module was realized in 2012, thanks to an $18 million investment from NASA. It wasn't just an abstract idea anymore. By 2016, BEAM was integrated into the ISS, measuring 4 meters long, over 3 meters wide, and occupying a volume of 16 cubic meters. To better understand BEAM's function, picture it as a storage room in space. Even though it was primarily experimental, astronauts occasionally used BEAM and often kept its hatch sealed. Notably, the module demonstrated resilience, withstanding potential threats like micrometeorite impacts. Data also revealed that the radiation level inside BEAM were consistent with other ISS segments, validating the effectiveness of these inflatable structures. However, every venture has its highs and lows. By 2020, Bigelow Aerospace faced financial difficulties, ultimately declaring bankruptcy. Robert Bigelow, who was deeply affected, disbanded the team and later shifted his focus to studying the metaphysical and the afterlife. Let's enter Sierra Space, a subsidiary of Sierra Nevada Corporation. Recognizing the potential of inflatable habitats, they started developing a similar concept known as life, large, integrated, flexible environment. Picture life as a sizable, three-tiered balloon. It can snugly fit into rockets like SpaceX's Falcon 9 in its compact form. Once in its cosmic void, it expands, presenting a spacious interior equivalent to one-third of the entire ISS. Sierra Space's aspirations didn't halt with life. Collaborating with Blue Origin, they envisioned the Orbital Reef Space Station, which incorporates these modules. Envision connecting multiple life units, akin to assembling Lego parts, paving the way for grander space habitats. Moving forward, safety is paramount in the hostile environment of space. While inflatable habitats might evoke vulnerability, Sierra space structures, particularly life, defy such perceptions. Its exterior, composed of a robust material named Vectron, boasts an intricate weave resembling basket patterns. The material's resilience rivals that of steel, ensuring structural integrity even in space's demanding conditions. Sierra's space commitment to safety and quality is evident in its rigorous testing procedures, subjecting life to extreme conditions, including impact tests and pressure simulations. Preliminary data suggests that life habitats could potentially last six decades in space. The evolution of space habitats, from Bigelow's beam to Sierra Space's life, marks a significant leap of humankind's pursuit of becoming an interstellar species. With a continuous convergence of innovation, data, and aspiration, the dream of establishing human colonies in space is inching closer to reality. In space, if something creates a hole in your living space, you might wonder if you'd get sucked out. Contrary to movie depictions, space doesn't work that way. In fact, space is very different. The average pressure in space is around negative 14 atmospheres. Earth's standard air pressure at sea level stands at about 14 psi, or 30 psi, pounds per square inch, when converted. This means if something small, like a micrometeorite, made a hole in its inflatable habitat in space, it would be like a tiny puncture in a bike tire here on Earth. Air would escape, but slowly. Luckily, this type of damage can be fixed. Now, there's a lot to talk about radiation in space, which is a genuine concern. Soft-shelled habitats, like the ones we're discussing, have an edge here. Water which has a lot of hydrogen, is great at blocking radiation. Many of these habitats use a plastic called polyethylene. This plastic has a lot of hydrogen. It's somewhat similar to a material in surgical masks that many wear during health crises. Back in the day, Bigelow Aerospace had designs that used foam with lots of hydrogen to help protect against radiation. There are risks when you go into space beyond the safety of Earth's magnetic field. But these inflatable habitats are safe as other space technologies. 
These inflatable habitats are handy when considering future space missions, like going to Mars. They have a main core that holds important things like communication tools, life support systems, power sources, and science equipment. At the beginning, important things like medical kits and exercise machines are kept there, but astronauts can rearrange them and make the place more spacious once set up on Mars. Different habitat designs are made based on where they'll be used, floating in space or on a planet like Mars. Current designs, like those from Sierra, are made for space. They use flexible walls inside to give astronauts their own space. There's no need for things like floors, but future designs, such as the life modules, will work well with gravity. When we think about space, Safety and efficiency is extremely important. There is the emptiness of space, harmful radiation, and flying space rocks to think about. As we dream about going beyond Earth, tools like inflatable habitats become priceless. They're flexible but tough, making it perfect for exploring space. NASA's Lunar Gateway Project gives us a sneak peek of the future. They're working on building a station on the moon. This is a big step towards preparing for Mars, making sure astronauts have everything they need for space travel. Sierra Space has great plans for space living. They've thought about gravity and have come up with cool solutions. A ring-shaped space station. When it spins, it makes artificial gravity. This is key for humans living in space for a long time. Old studies from the last century first came up with the spinning idea. Sierra's design combines old ideas with the latest technology. They want to use several modules to make the ring, which means they can add more over time. The design of life habitat is based on rockets we have now, but future rockets will be able to carry more items. This means bigger living spaces for astronauts. We can see this in SpaceX's Starship, made by Elon Musk's team. In 2023, Sean Buckley from Sierra Space talked about the Starship's huge carrying capacity. This rocket is big, about 29.5 feet, and its base is almost 56 feet long. What's the main goal, you might ask? To take things to Mars. SpaceX is improving their rockets too, using the Raptor 3 engines. This boosts the rocket's power. There's talks about making the top part of the rocket even bigger. All these changes make sure the rocket is super effective for Mars missions. Sierra Space is excited about Starship. They think with this powerful rocket, they can make a life module with a whopping 70,000 cubic feet of space. For comparison, the International Space Station, our big achievement in space, is only about 31,700 cubic feet. Sierra's idea is to provide more than double this space with just one trip. We're talking about a living space as long as 60 foot long rooms and as wide as 131 to 164 foot rooms. For a successful Martian settlement, imagine two giant modules. One orbits Mars and the other rests on its surface. Together, they are crucial for Martian life. This highlights humanity's progress in space tech and our bright interplanetary future. With companies like Sierra Space leading, is Mars colonization imminent? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Smash that like and subscribe for more.